you're the coolest guy here, Coach. Yeah. I don't know if this is a sign of being cool. <laughs> Coach, after the, some of the stuff that's gone down this offseason with players getting dismissed or Galen, and, uh, how excited are you just kind of get back to the, the football portion of what you do? Um, um, I've used the word excited a lot today. Um, probably overused it. But um, I, I think I'm rejuvenated to get back. You know, it's been, uh, and not just because we've had things to deal with, and we've we've had to deal with some things, and, um, and we've got to own up to those things and, and talk about them, and we talk about them as a team, and, and put all our cards on the table. But um, I'm, I'm really excited to coach this young group of eager people. And that doesn't mean that I haven't been before. It doesn't mean anything about the two previous teams I've gotten the privilege of coaching at Virginia Tech. It just means we got a unique challenge. And we're certainly not starting from scratch, but we are uh, a youthful team with some huge challenges in front of us. And I can't wait for us to go hit them head on because we have a group that I think is eager to take those challenges on. But is it frustrating as a coach when you have those things happen and you know, you're planning on those guys and this is starter? to have that happen when you're trying to set that culture of you know, yeah. accountability. Well, I mean, let's just talk about it. Okay, so we have Adonis Alexander that, that, that is an eligible. And um, the improvement I've seen in Adonis over the last couple of years is remarkable. Everybody always assumed that whenever I mentioned something about a defensive back, everybody was assumed I was talking about Adonis. And that was not necessarily true. I was very proud of him. you know. Adonis in the last meeting we had face to face was Coach Fuente, please use me as an example uh, to our freshman. Coach, you know, he just dug himself a, a hole and he tried to get out of it. He just couldn't get all the way out. And you know, Coach, thank you for 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 not giving up on me, but continuing to push me and for pushing me through my you know, he would say, my hard-headed time. And, um, you know, this is a kid that wanted to come back, that, um, you know, that that knew that he needed our discipline level on a consistent basis. And it just it, it just couldn't make it all the way back out. So for me, yeah, I, it's disappointing because I hurt for that kid. But it's a teaching point for all of us, for all, all of our kids. Um, you know, we've had some uh, you know, some other decisions we've had to make with guys that you know they've been hanging on by a string since I've been there, and um, so we've had to make other decisions and move on. Um, does, it, does it bother me that Jeremy Webb uh, hurt his Achilles stretching on the second day he was here? Yeah, but there's not really a lot I can do. About it. So I don't like the word frustrated. I'm absolutely not frustrated. I'm um, trying to use these these moments to teach and for us to all get better and to learn from them. And uh, and I think the kids are as well. How about the situation with Galen and obviously how close you are with him, uh, everything he's going through, how hard was that? Do well, there's a there's some things in that situation that I'm not willing to go down. Um, I'm not willing to go down that road. Um, I wish him and his family nothing but the best and hope that they um, are able to get everything that they need and, and want and, 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 and hope they have you know, many years of success. At this point in your tenure at Virginia Tech, how do you feel like your stamp is really taking over on this program? I don't know. I don't really worry about stamp. Or, like I, I, and I don't, I'm not patronizing your wordage there. I just, like I've been asked about that a lot. Like, is it your program now and all that kind of stuff? And I'm never worried about that. You know, I, I just know um, I'm comfortable enough with myself to know that uh, what we're teaching them on a daily basis and the process that we've been placed leads to success. Um, and, and defining that success, certainly win, wins and losses is one way to do that. Um, but that's not what we talk about. We don't talk about the wins and losses on a daily basis. We talk about doing the right thing and being consistent to do that, doing that consistently. So. Um, I don't know. I like where we're going. I like where we're at. I like our developmental model in our program and all our area, kids' areas of their lives from their academic development to their social development, their spiritual development, their athletic development. 
I like where our recruiting process is at from, from what we're bringing in and the type of evaluation tools we're using. And I think in the long run, it's going to, it's going to benefit us and we're going to have um, success. Justin, Josh, I think, is one of just two sophomores whom coaches selected to bring here to the kickoff. What does your decision to bring him here say about your confidence sure. in him? Well, first of all, I would say this. We have a couple seniors on offense that are deserving. Uh, Stephen Peoples is absolutely deserving, and he would rather stab himself in the eye. <laughs> okay? As would you. So I, I'm saving Stephen from having to do this, you know. Um, you know, Yosh Nijman is another senior that is deserving. But, you know, those guys, they don't want it. They don't want to do this. And to be honest with you, I don't want to put you all through a whole day of a group of guys that, that, that don't want to do that, you know. And so uh, in the absence of those – you know, they're certainly not offended, I guess is my point. And I don't think you all are either. So, so you know, bring in your starting quarterback who, who is a good worker and a good kid and, and um, you know, is a, is a returner that's, that's um, I mean, just made sense to me. And I do have confidence in him. Um, you know, he also knows if he goes out there and, and, and gets beat out in the fall, I'm going to play somebody else. But... I also have confidence in him and the way he goes about his business to, to bring him here as a sophomore. Right. You had said, with him standing right next to you after the spring game, sure. he needs to fall in love more with the process. Did he? I think to he is. I think he is. I think it's a. I think the thing I like about Josh is the same thing I like about a lot of our guys. Is that, and we use this term a lot, is challengeable. Like if I issue you a challenge, are you willing to, to accept it? And as a team, I didn't think... When we started this offseason, we were a very challengeable group, and we've hit on that. I think we're making strides, but Josh is a challengeable person. And I think he has taken that challenge and will continue to take that challenge as we lead into the season. What improvements have you seen in Stephen Peoples, and what else do you like with your backfield? Well, Stephen, I, I just think he's in the right spot at tailback. You know, I, I really do. And, I mean, I was really – he was really uh, productive when he played. He just was hurt. He had a foot injury. He was out. I don't remember what the numbers are, but a long time. Um, so I just want him to be healthy and, and get in there because nobody really likes tackling him. He's so low to the ground. He's so strong and powerful. I think he has a chance to have a good a good season. I like the way I like him. I like Deshaun McLeese. The, you know, I think they're two totally different pe different backs. I think they have a chance to to be really productive. And then you get. Some of those other guys, um, you know, in the fold that can be consistent, I think you may have a chance to, to be an you know, efficient group back there, starting with those two older players. With three corners and two safeties gone, um, one, how do you feel about the guys you have on the back end? And two, do you talk to Bud about, hey, maybe this isn't going to be a man-to-man, -man, one -on one-on-one on the outside kind of defense? Well, it's, it's impossible to – not impossible, but it's very difficult to – keep people from running the ball down your throat if you don't have enough people in the box. So under no circumstances are we going to just vacate the box for pass coverage and let people run the ball down the field. That's just not happening. Um, so you know, you're going to have, you're going to play some, you're going to be, you can't totally avoid one-on-one -on -one situations in the back end. Um, I feel really good about what we've got in terms of we have some some young long athletic tough guys that would like to play um, they all told me that they wanted to play early so here's your chance okay they the, the, the challenge is it's not good enough at virginia tech to play you got to play well and getting those guys to that level is the challenge as coaches so i feel good about them yes i think they have a talent level they just have never done it they haven't played and you know, if we can get some of those guys that are returning mixed with some of the new guys and keep bringing guys along, then I think I think we'll have a chance. But I, like, I guess what I'm saying is I like where we're starting. Everybody would love to be sitting here with 22 returning starters, guys that are all over the place, and both the Edmonds brothers back there. And, but, you know, they made good decisions. They, they moved on. So um, in the absence of that, I like where we're starting as we as we develop those guys through, through the process. What was your... How much added pressure is there opening up with a team like yours? 
Well, I mean, it's a conference game on the road with a young football team. I mean, it's going to be an extra challenge, but I don't really look at it as pressure. I look at it as opportunity. I look at it as this is this is what's before us. Let's go take it head on. Um, we're going. I said in the big deal, we're going to we're going to jump in off the high dive. You know, we're going to dip our toe in the in the shallow end. We're going to start the year by, by jumping off, and we'll go see how it goes. You know, again, it's a tremendous challenge for. For a young squad to go in that hostile environment and play that play that talent, um, but we're all looking forward to it. Coach, you said your team is young and you face some unique challenges. But how prepared do you feel <coughs> Virginia Tech is the challenge in the coastal uh, division? I have no idea how good anybody else is going to be. I, I'm not worried about that. I'm, I'm worried about our, our football team. So I don't I don't know I don't know where everybody else is at, and it's it's really not my responsibility to worry about them. Comparing our, our squad against other people that I know nothing about right now is, is probably unfair. So, um, we'll see. In your oh. pool analogy, you said cannonball. When was the last time you did a, a cannonball? It's been a long time. It's been a long time. I coached the little girls up on cannonball. So. <laughs> What's good cannonball you, technique? Uh, knees to chest, hold on tight. <laughs> you... When you said earlier, we were talking about the off season. You said, "Okay, let's let's go through them." You mentioned Adonis. You did not mention Moot. Yeah. Can you elaborate? Oh, uh, um, I can tell you that, that we're not that um, that he's not playing for us this year. No. Um, you know, in the spring we were not on good terms, and. Um, and we're going to move on. And I, I hate it, but I can't compromise what we're trying to accomplish on a daily basis. Um, I tell our kids all the time, guys, um, I, I can't put me in a, in a position to choose between you and the team because I'm going to choose the team every single time. Is there any avenue for him to return to the program? Is that door closed? It's closed. What, if any, was your irritation level that Josh's eligibility became became public speculation fodder for a period of this office? Well, I hated that it got out there, but it did. So, so what are you going to do? Sit around and be mad about it? You know, like it's just. Um, I thought it was an issue that was private and should have stayed private and then ultimately been resolved and moved on. Instead, it was an issue that was private that became public and got resolved and we moved on. So it's not the path I would have chosen, but um, it is, it's what happened and there's no change in it. How did he handle that sort of two week period where it was, it was a little bit of limbo whether he... Yeah, I thought he did a great job. You know, he's... Uh, He's a mature kid. We had a lot of conversations. I won't go into all those conversations, but um, I think he handled it really well. Coach, what? Yeah, well, that's a good question. You know, like it's it's one thing to to not know what scheme they're going to run. It's not it's another thing not to know who's going to play. So. Um, the way we've always approached that is, is, is we'll make our best guess and try to spend a lion's share of our time on what our best guess is, but also have a plan and prepare for contingencies. Yeah, we've. I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, we've we've um, we've played against each other. We've coached each against each other's assistants coach against each other as head coaches. So we've, we've kind of, we've come across each other's paths several times. Justin, when you look around the league, what do you think the level of quarterback play? Your guy who obviously at, at TCU and at Memphis had, had high-end guys uh, under you. There's obviously very good quarterbacks in this league. I'm just kind of curious if, if you see an elite high-end guy. Um... I think in my two years in the league, it's been fantastic. Sure. I mean, you know, I, between Lamar and Deshaun, uh, Deshaun and 
Trubisky and you know and our kid my first year had a really really good year yeah. but those guys were off the charts so um, it's it's been a really high level mm-hmm. um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head yeah. who's playing now you got you got Jones at Duke you've obviously got Finley at NC State his first yeah. team um, I'm zero. yeah yeah I haven't seen Finley very much because sure. we don't play no, him that makes sense. I think the kid at Duke is talented yeah. you know he's a big athletic kid and I think he's got a got a really bright future. Um, I just think there's a, there's there's some talent and there's some people that have some history with that position mm-hmm. in this league, which I think is helped. In hiring Tyrone, mm-hmm. was it the was it the coach she best connection from Ole Miss that originally led you to him? Was it Bud's relationship with him? Because I guess he had visited. Blacksburg when he was at Southern Miss maybe, sure. but before that, what 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 led you to him? Yeah, well, that's a good question. First of all, I had a you know everybody out there <laughs> thinks they know what we need to hire, okay? But the bottom line, the way I look at it is, um, a staff is is putting together a puzzle, and you're trying to find the pieces that fit together to make the puzzle whole, and. Um, Everybody has their strengths and weaknesses, including the head coach. And finding guys that can play off of, of those things is, is paramount to put together a good staff. In addition to somebody that can get along and coexist with these people for however many hours a week. So anyway, um, I had a description of what I was looking for. I thought it was important that somebody be in the room with Bud that had has had to think like that before, that it had to make big, big, uh, big picture decisions. That had some experience as a as a coordinator. And Brian's got that. But I thought we needed, a, you know, I thought that was something in addition that we needed um, because I've been in Bud's situation before. I've been the coordinator, and having somebody else in there that's thought about it in those terms is important. So that was one thing. Well, this wasn't the best time of year to go hiring football coaches. So. The fact that we were able to to hire Ty when we hired him, I think, is remarkable. Um, I had coached against him personally. I asked Bud, I brought Bud in and said, you know, there's a million different ways we can go with this. Like, uh, tell me what you think of this, tell me what you think of this, took his input in. Obviously, James knows Ty, so, so that helped on that end. And then I slowly, very slowly, moved forward in, in what we were trying to accomplish. People talk about team chemistry. Is there such a thing as staff chemistry? And if so, how important is it? Absolutely. Now, it depends on the management style, in my opinion. Okay, For some guys, staff chemistry does not matter. Okay. For me, the way I would prefer to manage is I would like for us to be the pristine example of team. I would like for us in front of the, the team to be the the just awesome example of team first, of a lack of ego, of, of encouraging, of coaching, so on and so forth. Um, and then when we're behind closed doors, if we need to address something or talk about something that is not for for team consumption, then we then we do it that way. And that's the way I've chose to go. And so if I'm going to go that way, yes, it is very important, in my opinion, that those guys they don't have to be best friends, but they got to be able to play off each other. they got to be able to coexist. they got to be able to depend on each other, just like we need, we're asking our players to do the exact same thing. Coach, my paper used to cover uh, Nadir Thompson, which is where this kind of offbeat question comes from. Uh-huh. But, um, you know, he's a great athlete. I'm just wondering if he kind of fits in that mold of those young guys on, on defense that can kind of, you know, fight for some playing time this year. Well, I think he will. I mean, I haven't seen him do anything yet. But he's just running and lifting with the freshman. But um, I think he's a talented kid. I think he's got a competitive fire inside of him that um, could could lend himself to having an opportunity to go. And, um I'm looking forward to, to get a chance to work with him because I think he's um, a pretty talented kid. Coach, you had young guys like Hezekiah Grimsley and Devin Hunter both stepped in last year and, and produced a little bit for you. What are you expecting, or how did they pro- progress throughout uh, you know, summer camp, and, and how do you expect them to contribute this year? Well, those two have had great summers in particular, Hezekiah uh, and Devin. They've had really productive summers. I'm really excited about that. 
Um, now we've got to take it to the field. We've got to take it to a productive level. We've got to take it to executing um, their position um, at, a, at a higher level. But in terms of what they put in and the, develop that, the, the development they've made, it's been really, really possible. How, if, it, how, if at all, does Reggie Floyd's role expand with some of those losses in the back seven? Well, I mean, he hasn't changed position, but I think um, – you know, he's going to have to shoulder some leadership role, I think, is the thing. You know? like, and that's what we've been trying to get out of him. Is what we, you know, I wasn't, quite honestly, very happy with his embracing of that in the spring, but have been more pleased with him through the summer. Okay. Um, and hopefully that can continue. So uh, we need him to do that. We, you know, he's one of the most experienced, if not the most experienced, you guys probably know better. Yeah, the most experienced guy in the back end now. So he needs to step into that role and, and not be the silent guy anymore. Another defensive veteran I want to ask about is Trevon Hill. How does he may provide a little bit of stability along with Ricky Walker up front? Well, he's played a lot of snaps and he's got some talent rushing the passer. You know, so, um, he's got a chance to be a, a productive a productive player for us. Thank you. Justin, you mentioned a lot of history with Willie. What were some of the hallmarks of the times you you faced him, be it at USF or, or other places? Like, what what do you kind of expect from him at, at, at Florida State? Oh, they'll be a tough. Like he's he's a tough football coach. I mean, yeah. they'll be a tough, hard nosed, well coached football team. And they'll be talented as well, obviously. Mm-hmm. But you know, they've he's an offensive guy, but they've played good defense. Sure, you know, like yeah. they've been. Sound in the in the kicking game. They've been great at running the ball on the perimeter, and mm-hmm. usually had a athletic guy back there at quarterback. So, mm-hmm. uh, but it all starts with they, they they come to play real football. They don't come to out and flash you. Like they're 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 a physical group. Have you run across him on the recruiting trail much? I don't know how much you guys. Oh, not not, not much. Yeah, you know, we're so. we're in a small part of Florida. Yeah, you know, we see him you know, in Georgia a little bit. But, okay. How much did you see them after they after they made the change to you know going way wide and outside the numbers? Who uh, Willie when he made when he made the, the big offensive change in 2015? How much did we see them? Yeah, I mean, how, how different are they from from what? Oh, Willie? I don't, you know, you know, and he hired Walt Bell from yeah, sure. from yeah, Maryland, Maryland yeah. which is a whole nother right family, another yeah. deal. So. Um, you know, they've had quite a bit of, of, I don't know if flexibility is the right word, or change of yeah. change of thought. Yeah. You know, I know when his was the last couple of years at South Florida, they were so fast on the edge. Yeah. They did such a good job. And they take you out all the way yeah, to the sideline. Right? Flowers was, yeah. was athletic. It spread you out all over the place. His, um, his motto, lethal simplicity, that's kind of his catchphrase down there, is... Is there a danger of being too simple? Does that make it easier for an opposing team if, if an offense is too simple? Can that happen? You want me to tell you that Willie's too simple? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'll stay away from that. <laughs> well, I mean, I, it's that's I mean, no, is that a balance. No, yeah, I'm, I'm with you 100. percent Yeah, that's the balance we all struggle with every day. Is like when is too much, or when do we not have enough, and when do we have too much, and when can we execute? But that's the balance we have all the time. You know, usually. The better players you have, the less you can do, or the less you need to do, you know. But um, certainly, that's the balance that all coaches, it's like the head coach is always worried about, um, are, we, are we hitting too much? Because he wants his guys healthy and ready to go. And the coordinators were always worried about, are we doing too much? Are we not doing enough? Have answers to, to games. Do you, in your experience, though, the coaches more often walk away from losses thinking we we'll try to do too much, or we didn't have. Them? Oh, I think you know. I know for me personally, as a coordinator, I, I was the one that wanted to do too much. You know, um, you know I that was just that was just me. I wanted more. Um, I think it's different to each each person. Some coaches would have left Josh home so he wouldn't have to answer questions about the academic team. You went ahead and brought him uh, just the confidence you have in him? Or? Yeah, he can handle it. He'll be all right. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, it's a situation that was that's handled, and there's really not all that much to go into. It's not like he's got to get up and give a big, huge dissertation about everything. And, and, uh, and then I told him, I said, 
Go with Lynch or Ashley Rutherford. <laughs> you, you haven't obviously had a chance to see most of the incoming freshmen on the practice field, but at least conceptually, what have you and the staff thought about in terms of the new red shirt rule and how you might use it strategically? Do you front end it? Do you back end it? Or, yeah, a lot of different ways to tackle I know. Things. There are. And I've, I've, I've been reading some of the comments of other coaches in other leagues that have been asked the same question at their, at their deal. And I just think it's going to be an ongoing evaluation. I just don't know that we're going to know, certainly right now, maybe as we approach our first game, we'll be able to put guys in columns of what we think is going to happen. You know, like we think this is an early and see, this is a wait and see later. You know, that's kind of what I'm envisioning happening. But, you know, one twisted ankle can throw all that uh, out the window. So the bottom line is the rule is good. It adds more strategy and, and more talk to it, which I think is, is neat and is a good thing. Um, but I, I just don't know that anybody can make a blanket statement about what they're going to do with it yet. I think we just got to get through it and lead up to the first game and have a plan. And then the second game, we've got a plan. And the third game, we've got a plan. It's the best way to do it. How do you think your identity is on offense this year, Justin? What do I think our identity yeah, on like offense is? Like, how do you see your, your identity forming? Or? Well, I mean, I'd like – I don't know. I I want us to be able to run the ball and create some more big plays in the passing. Sure. Um, you know, it all starts up front. I think we'll be – we're going to continue to get better up front. And, um, we're still not to where the way I want to play, we're not there. We won't be there. But, Why? But we're, we just don't have it. The depth. Okay. Like I want eight guys to play wide out in the first quarter. I want guys out there because I want to play more people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the whole running back by committee deal gets blown out of proportion here. If we have one guy that's the best one, he's going to play. Mm -hmm. Like, but I want guys to know they're going to have a chance to play, and I want them to be able to go out there and know that somebody else could come in, and I also want them to know that. They're going to get to play. And we're just not to that level yet. That lets you push the pace. Yeah, that lets you push the pace a little bit more. But right now, we're still not there. That's what I meant by identity. Because that, by the end at Memphis, you were there. At yeah, the it was awesome, man. Yeah. We were, we were able to do that stuff. And like last year, we totally went the other way. I don't really. And again, I've, I've said this before. Like I don't care about the statistics. I care about winning games. Like mm -hmm. last year. I mean, I make no bones about it. We were trying to take the air out of the ball yeah. and find a way to win win the ball game. Mm -hmm. We were great on defense. We were really good on special teams, and, mm -hmm. and we needed to not mess it up offensively. Yeah. Now that won't be the case next this year, and it won't be the case. You know, we got to figure it out. Our first year, we set ten school records on offense, and and we probably weren't as good on defense as we were last year. So, finding how to how to win the game is is the important thing. You said earlier that this team was not, to, to your liking, challengeable enough, either at the end of the spring or the beginning yeah. of the month. Do you know why that was, and how did you address it and try to remedy it? Well, we've tried to cram it down their throat, you know? <laughs> it's the honest truth. I mean, my first first deal was, I, my conversation with them in the winter time was, this is what concerns me, is, is that, I, that we are not challengeable. We, we don't have enough gumption to, to answer the bell, to answer the call. And um, and through through Ben Hilgard deserves a tremendous amount of credit to, for this. Um, through the summer, has continued to build on that. We built on it through the spring and trying to continue to, to put hurdles out there for them to get over, you know, to continue to challenge them to go take the next step forward to, to to accomplish something, whether it's a run or a lift or a practice or whatever, um, so that then we can reinforce the fact that we are meeting challenges and, and answering the call. How does that manifest itself, Justin, that they're, they don't have the, the gumption? Is it not finishing a game in the fourth quarter? Is it, what, well, how does it manifest itself during the season? Yeah, or even in the Well, I mean, it's in, season. yeah, well, I just think it's in everything. Like it's in their, it's in their preparation. Are you strong enough and disciplined enough to hold the rope? I mean, it's a grind. It's hard. We ask these kids to do a lot, and um, you know the 
we go back to some of the things we talk about all the time in terms of grit. You know, the number one determining factor of people's success is their stick to itiveness. It's not their talent. It's not their height, weight, vertical jump, or ACT score. It's their ability to continue to show up every day and grind away and try and find a way to improve. So for someone like Jimmy Taylor, I mean, where do you see him on that D-line? Jimmy's going to be fighting for playing time. Um, I don't know that he's in the too deep right now, but um, he'll have an opportunity in the fall to try and get on the field. What's something that would help? I mean, what's something he has to improve on that he's just not there yet as a guaranteed starter? Well, I mean, he's got Vinny Mahoda and Ricky Walker in front of him, two fifth-year seniors that have been pretty accomplished players. So um, Jimmy's got a, a lot of work to do from a physical standpoint, from a mental standpoint, to be a productive player for us. How would you assess the state of the program's relationships with Virginia high school coaches, and how does that fit into keeping more guys home? I think it's been fantastic. Between the coaches we have in the areas and the, and the relationships they've developed, to <coughs> the camps and clinics that we've conducted across the state, and the kids that, that we've signed, uh, I, would, I would categorize it as excellent. When you talk about worrying that they're not challengeable, and you mentioned Ben working on that, what about a guy like Ricky Walker? And how does he, if he does, how does he factor into challenging teammates? Is that a. Yeah, I just think, uh, you know, for Ricky, it's Ricky's there every day and does exactly what we ask him to do. It's encouraging other people to come along and, and reach that accountability level, I think is, is the important thing for Rick. And. Um, we're seeing him do that. Like he's got to, you know, he'll have to speak more, you know, than he's than he's used to doing. Because Rick, everybody listens to you, man. Like when you speak, I listen to you. Like I have that much respect for you. Like you've earned that. So don't be afraid to yield that, you know, that sword, so to speak, or use that power that you have over these young, these young guys. Have you seen him doing sure. that more and more? Yeah. Coach, sorry if you already passed this. That's all right. With not having played them in so long and with them having a new coach, how do you prepare for FSU in this one? Well, in short, we will prepare for the players by watching Florida State film, the personnel, and then we'll, rep we'll prepare for the scheme by watching uh, the coordinators and the head coaches' previous places. I mean, that's basically – basically how we do it. So it adds a little bit more to the preparation. You got to go to two separate places. Usually you can see the scheme and the personnel in the same spot. So it just adds a little bit more. So you probably got to watch a little Oregon and a little Maryland then, right? Oregon, Maryland. Michigan State too, Michigan right? State. Yeah. yeah. Any interest in uh, rescheduling Michigan for home and home? We are scheduled so far out right, until, <laughs> yep. like, I don't know who the head coach will be when we get to the open. It's a long way. So I know that. I'll so be, I'm in, not nurse, really, I'll yeah. be in the nursing home. Really about, uh, on the list of my worries I've got, that's uh, about the last one. We're scheduled for a long way out. Do you like the, uh, maybe not you guys are all scheduled out, but just conceptually, do you like the, the home and home, uh, you know, kind of premier start games to start the season or you know, neutral site? Um, I like playing good people. Um, you know, the neutral site deal I, I think is fine. I just, the, the one thing I want to make sure we don't go too far away from is the college campus experience. Like, I think that's really cool. Um, and I get, the, I get the neutral site deal and the money and all that stuff. I understand it. But, and I don't think we're at a tipping point concerned with that. I just want to make sure we don't get to where we're not on campuses. But I like, I like playing good people. I mean, I'm not sure I always want it to be the very first game of the year with, you know, three returning starters on defense. But uh, I like playing good people, and I don't mind doing it early in the year. Has, has Bud even mentioned to you that this may be the youngest group that he's, you know, now that the No, I don't want him to tell me it's the youngest one ever. <laughs> like, he's been there so long, I don't want him to tell me it's the youngest one ever. But, no, I mean, we know. You know, like he knew what we were dealing with on on the other side last year, and we know we we get it. And we're all again, it's it's all about finding a way to get it done. And 
I just keep I keep going back to this. The future is so bright with what we've got and what we've got coming in um, that I'm so re-energized. I, don't, I hate that word because it makes it sound like I was down in the dumps before. I'm not. I wasn't, but just excited to go coach these young guys. And yeah, I know they're going to be young, but you know, here after today, we're going to put a moratorium on that word. We're not going to use it as an excuse anymore. Like we're not going to talk about how young we are. Who, I won't use the word. Who are you some? Can. Of, who, <laughs> who, who are some of the players that the fans may not know a lot about, or we may not know a lot about? Who you are real? Who give you this energy that you talk? Yeah, about. like Caleb Farley. Here's a kid that practiced ten periods last year right, before, before he hurt his knee. Ten periods and hurt his knee. Doing a drill I was asking him to do, okay? <laughs> no said, guilt or all. Yeah, I felt horrible. Yeah. Yeah. I still feel horrible. And I've watched him for a year, absolutely work his tail off. And I want to see that kid succeed so bad. I, I mean, I can't wait for him to go play well. Now, he's got a lot of work to do to play well. He hasn't played. Last time he played, he played quarterback in high school. Okay, but he's talented, and he's worked his tail off. You know, like to see that improvement is is – is really fun. Um, what was the drill you asked him to do? Was it non we did a non-contact. Yeah, we were in helmets. Non-contact. Golly, I wish I hadn't brought that up. But yeah, it was. Just <laughs> but it was. A, it was just. He was doing what I asked him to do, and I feel terrible. But yeah, I was totally non-contact. But like, that's a perfect example of a guy that you know for a year he's had a great attitude, worked his tail off. I went in there to go make him feel better, and he made me feel better after he got hurt. You know what I mean? Like, I went in there to go pick up a kid that just got hurt, and he made me feel better. You know? How, like, how'd he do it? Like, he had a great attitude. Like, his outlook on life is, is, you know, he had a death in the family. I called him, and he made me feel better. That's just him. You know? Like, I was calling to console him. And this was recently. Or? It was like um, it's been a couple months ago, you know. Yeah. And and I called him to, 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 to tell him how sorry I was. And the guy got off the phone, feeling feeling better. You know, it's amazing. He's just an amazing kid. And you say you heard it on the second day he was on campus. Is that right? Or? Caleb. Is that oh, what I'm sorry. Me? I thought you were talking about Jeremy. My bad. No. No, Jeremy was yeah. Okay. Warm ups the second day. But anyway, like Kate, you know, there's just a, a hard, a whole bunch of those young guys, you know, that are like Devin, Devin Hunter. Okay, Devin Hunter is working like a walker, which is exactly what you want. Yeah. That doesn't mean that he's. I'm not saying he's a first-round draft pick. I'm not saying. That, I'm just saying you those guys are invested in what we're doing. Young, talented people. We just got to get them to be good players. So Justin, is it you kind of have to replace all a lot of a lot of players on offense now as defense? Do you do you feel like in not this season coming up, the next one was when things even out a little bit? Pretty excited. That's a that's a confident <laughs> nod. Look at that smirk. Yes. Look at that smirk. Like some of the young offensive linemen we have, are pretty special. I mean, I'm, I'm what we're doing at, at tight end, and, and I just I'm. And that would coincide, if my math's right, with your fourth year, which means it's mostly your guys, I would think, a majority. Like, your plan from when you started. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, you, yeah. you can look at, yeah, probably. Sure. You know, like, the very first year we were here, we just signed the guys that were yeah. committed. We had a Gerard and TJ Jackson. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, like, I don't count that as our, our – they're our guys. They're yeah. all our guys. Don't Obviously. get me wrong. But yeah. like that next year, we had a full year to recruit. Sure. And that next year, we had a full year to recruit. Yeah. This year will be a smaller class, but it's going to be a pretty good one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pretty excited. You mentioned Devin and, and how he's these days working like a walk-on, which has got to give you a, 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 a little boost considering he's now in a pretty big spot with, with move gone. Um, I'm sure you don't want to get in Devin's face and say, you got to do this because you know it's all on you. But how do you sort of – approach him about his new role and his responsibility and that sort of big time dual, dual role he, spot. He, like I haven't had to do anything with him like if he 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 knows that he took every snap there all spring yeah you know it's not like uh, he was the fifth team uh, 
safety, and then all of a sudden now he's, he's bumped up. Like he took every rep there all the spring. So um, I'm just encouraged by the fact that you take a guy like that as an example that's working like that. And that's what gets us excited. When you know those kids are paying the price on a daily basis in terms of their work and it, it gets you excited to go get to be around them again. That's why we do this, is we get a chance to push them to be the best. Justin, do you have any examples of Ricky Walker displaying his knowledge of the game? It's maybe a little uncommon for his position. I mean, he, he, he seems like he cares about every position on the defense. Well, you can just watch him like through spring practice. Okay? And like by the eighth practice of spring, I don't know if he knows the calls by the linemen or their stance or what, but he knows every everything that's going on. I'm talking about on the offense. So like the guard pulls, he's in his tip pocket. Like he just, he is so sharp and so smart. Probably not doing a good job articulating it, but he, you know, practicing against him after a week is a pain because he knows everything that's going on, you know? And you can just see it in the cutups. You can see him, uh, you can see him doing things that are graduate school, intelligent level football um, after five practices. You know, it's just pretty impressive. How, how comfort? I know the word comforting probably hasn't been in your f f vocabulary <laughs> lately, but uh, how comforting is that to know that you know one of your returners is is him? I, I love it. You know, I love that. That we've got him back. He's every year we get we get these we have these guys that that um, that we continue to hold up as a great example. When Ricky's gone, Ricky knows this. I'll talk about him the same way I talk about Chuck Clark and the Edmonds brothers and um, you know, the, 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 Sam, the whole litany of guys.